Hey there guys, welcome to a new episode of Backpacking TV. In this episode, we're breaking down all of the ways to keep your feet healthy and happy on the trail. Foot care is one of the most important things of doing an extended backpacking trip. Anytime you're getting on the trail, you are risking injury to your feet and it's the most common thing. Most injuries that are related to backpacking that happen in the backcountry are somehow happening from the ankle down. So we wanna minimize the chances of your injury, of your discomfort, uh, whether it's from just blisters or whether it's a full on actual injury like a sprained ankle. First and foremost, dry feet are happy feet. So it's really important to keep your feet dry and to not create a wet environment for your feet. Mostly, that's coming from sweat. Your own body can be your own enemy when it comes to backpacking and feet. However, there are other things that may happen. You may be forced to cross a stream. Uh, you might be caught in a rainstorm or having to trudge through snow. So if those things happen, we'll talk about all of those things of what to do uh, if your feet get wet with those. But first, let's talk about sweat, the most common thing that's going to cause problems for your feet. Choosing the right footwear and choosing the right socks are really important. So when I'm thinking about my next backpacking trip, I will take into account what sort of environment am I gonna be in? Will there be snow around? Will it be really wet from streams? Will it be muddy trails? Is it in the desert where it's hot? Uh, what's, that gonna, what's that gonna be like? So I think it's really important to get a piece of footwear. I think it's really important to get a boot or something that will be breathable. Um, I don't like the super hardcore, uh, no moisture moves type of boots that, that can happen, especially with like really heavy duty leather waterproof boots. These are the Breeze Light GTX from Basque, and this is a really good type of boot for something where you need some waterproof capabilities, but you also want the more lightweight boot that has some breathability. I just got back from hiking in California with these and I really like these. I was even trudging through snow, crossing streams, and these kept my feet dry. And also when I was hiking in the Mojave Desert, I wasn't too sweaty. So that was, that was really nice. So having something like this is kind of like a mid-weight boot. These are really good to have. So choosing the right pair of boots is really important. I do want to note that I also sometimes like to hike with low-cut boots or something more that's like a trail runner. I really find that those can be excellent for given conditions, especially in the desert. I'm in the Southwest. I do a lot of hiking in the backcountry here and it's really hot. And sometimes a low cut boot that is lightweight is, is the best. Um, the, the risk that comes with a low cut boot is that you have less ankle support. So if you're carrying a really heavy backpack, I don't recommend going with a low cut boot, but if you have a lower weight amount of weight that you're carrying, low cut boot is a really good option. Um, socks are also a really important part of the equation here. So there's a few options. I have some, uh, some mid-weight socks, some really lightweight socks, and then also some heavy duty socks. So what is best for you to actually hike in? Again, it's based on conditions, but I prefer in general to go with either the really lightweight or this mid-weight. I, I have found an affinity for darn tough socks. I really like their brand of socks. There are some other really good ones out on the market. These just uh, darn tough has kind of been my go-to, my favorite, um, but they make a really good pair of durable socks. And the main thing is, is the keeping, again, making sure that you're doing things to cut down how much sweat develops in your boot. But I do also carry with me heavy duty socks. <clears throat> so if I'm not hiking in them, what would I be using them for? So these are awesome for when you get to camp and you wanna change out of your sweaty socks and into something more comfortable. These are great. I do also recommend having a pair of socks that's only for sleeping. It's the best. So I do carry a heavy duty sock, but for hiking, I go lightweight, something that'll dry out the sweat on the go. One thing I do like to do if I'm in a place where moisture is gonna be a concern, I will have two pairs of socks that I will rotate throughout the day so that one pair is not just getting overly saturated. And then I'll either string these up uh, to dry on my backpack if it's sunny or if it's cold 
and maybe not so sunny where it's gonna dry on its own, I will tuck these basically in my jacket and let my body do the warming and the drying. Your body acts as drier, which is great, especially in the winter. There's no downside to smelling like socks. There are some times when wet feet are outside of your control. So what do you do if you come across a mandatory stream crossing? You might not always be able to use a bridge or hop across on boulders. Sometimes you have to roll up your pants and ford the river. Now, I do think that there are many times when I ford a river and I just go barefoot. However, there's a lot of times when that might be dangerous to do. So if it's swift water and it looks rocky, uh, I want to keep my feet uh, protected by wearing my boots even though I'm gonna be crossing a stream. So that means that obviously then beyond that, I'm going to be hiking with wet boots. So one thing I might do is I might, before a mandatory stream crossing where I have to wear my boots, I might take off the socks, just go barefoot inside or just, just go bare feet in the boot and then that way I still have dry socks for later on in the trail. And then wring your boots out as best you can, which is not always that possible. They're gonna be wet, they're gonna retain water. Uh, but then you're gonna have to do a lot more care with rotating your socks, wringing out any water that's gonna get up on your socks and keep hiking with hopefully as dry feet as possible. I do wanna note uh, different types of materials will definitely play a different role. I will pretty much never again hike in cotton socks. Cotton socks are just the worst. They do terrible things with water. They pull moisture close to your feet, uh, against your skin, and make your feet a ripe environment for bad conditions and blisters. Wool socks, on the other hand, will wick moisture away, and I just love the feel of, of wool socks. And so wool socks are much better for backpacking and hiking. And so making sure that you use the right material, getting a good quality, like 15 to $20 pair of socks, will go a long ways over cheap cotton socks. Most problems with your feet are going to arise from either ill-fitting boots or too much moisture in your boots. So it's best to maintain, be vigilant, be aware of what kind of problems can arise. And if you're new to backpacking, being aware that your feet will feel differently at mile eight than at mile zero. So if you are just buying your new pair, from the store and you walk around the store, that's a very different thing than when you have 50 pounds on your back and you're eight miles deep. So uh, being aware, I like to just take a stop every two hours or so on the trail. And if possible, take off my boots, let my feet air out a little bit. And then also I'll just look at my feet, visually inspect my feet, see if I have any uh, red spots developing, Usually I'm, I've gotten to the point where I'm aware at this point, I can kind of tell up, uh, I've got a spot right here that's developing, what do I do about it? Early prevention is much better than dealing with a big problem later. So one of the things that I like to do is if I do have a hot spot developing and I know that there's a blister coming, I'll take a little square of duct tape and I'll tear that off and I'll throw that over, say, uh, the, my toe, or the ball of my foot, wherever I feel that there's a problem developing. And then that provides a barrier so that there's less friction happening. Now, if you have a fully developed blister, I don't recommend using duct tape because as soon as you take that tape off, you're gonna be ripping the skin off with it. And that's no good, we don't want that. Now you may have developed a blister and then what do you do if you have a blister? So moleskin is a great solution. That is, uh, you cut a ring around the moleskin. Basically, you cut uh, the size of the blister and you try to create a buffer so that that part of your skin is not receiving as much friction, as much tension in your boot, uh, exacerbating the problem. Sometimes the problem has gone too far and that blister is gonna pop no matter what you do. So if that's the case, I usually carry with me a safety pin and then I want to lance the blister squeeze all the pus and liquid out of it, and then that really reduces that problem. And by lancing a blister, it also means that that blister is not gonna pop and they're leaving me with a big flapper and a bunch of exposed raw skin that is problematic because it's painful and problematic because it's easy to introduce bacteria into that raw skin. And uh, we also want to avoid that. If you have just a little tiny itty bitty blister, 
I don't recommend lancing it. It's best to not be uh, putting holes in your skin, to not be exposing skin to outside bacteria. Uh, feet and, boot and s boots and socks are ripe areas for bacteria, so we want to be careful anytime we're dealing with wounds uh, or open exposed skin in, in those zones. So be careful with that. Um, that's just my advice. Medical professionals might give other advice, but that's just uh, some, some tips that I've accumulated from being on the trail for many years and having many, many, many of my own blisters. We do have another video on the basics of backcountry first aid, so I do recommend you check out that video if, that, if this is a topic that you are interested in. A lot of the injuries that happen in the backcountry are related to feet, so having this video and combined with the other video can be a great way to keep you safe in the backcountry. Hope you liked this video. If you did find it useful, uh, please like and subscribe, and we have a lot of more useful information coming your way.